Hey everybody and welcome back to um J Trans App. Welcome back. Sorry, um as you can tell there's been more than one take, I keep getting interrupted. But um this is my FAQ which is going on like two to three weeks late. Um sorry guys, I know I said I'd have it up like within the week. Obviously that didn't happen, um extenuating circumstances and whatnot. So, um got all my questions on my Blackberry Storm here. So I'm just gonna read them straight off as you guys read them. Give me one second to scroll to them. Uh, oh, and by the way, thank you to everyone that wished me a happy birthday back on May 16th. That was awesome of you. Let's see. Wow. May 6th is when I got most of these questions. Okay, so um, here's how we're going to do this. I'm just going to answer them as we come. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to say the names. Um, I had a lot of people saying, hey, don't mention me, or you know, only say this, and... After a while, it gets a little complicated, guys, and I can't remember who said what in their question, so I'm just going to read your question off as is. Okay? Here we go. Um, Dear Jay Tran, how would you have redone or retcon the death of Frank Castle? Oh, um, yeah, if you're not aware, the Punisher is currently, they call him Franken Castle. Um, Wolverine's son, Dakin, Draken, I don't know, I haven't read anything with him in it. Um, killed the Punisher, and then Morbius from the Marvel Universe patched him up, and he's living on, like, Monster Island. And, um, it's crazy. Honestly, I don't think I retconned that. Um, I love Frank Castle, but in, like, Marvel Universe time, the guy's got to be, what, pushing 70? I mean, he was in Vietnam, for God's sake. Um, I'd probably actually bring in a new Punisher before I'd bring back that one. I'm not saying I don't like Frank and I don't want him to stay in the Marvel Universe, but... You know, I don't know if I'd rush to bring him back. Um, how I'd get rid of the Frankencastle stuff. Um, if you didn't see my How I Fix Ghost Rider video, where I basically say everything in the Marvel Universe can be retcon, which was on another channel. Um, there's really it's gonna be hard. I'm don't really have any ideas of myself for myself of how I fix the death of Frank Castle. Um, dear Jerry Train, my question is, what is the best GI Joe figure you have from any line? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, personally, I'm going to say it's the, um, even though I didn't open it because it combined my favorite two characters, it's the 25th anniversary um, Ram Cycle versus Trouble Bubble or Cobra Flight Pod, I think they changed its name to, with um, Breaker and the Televiper. So it's got two of my favorite vessels, two of my favorite characters, and it was only 15 bucks when it came out, so that was a great deal. So... Um, let's see. What are your thoughts on the new Green Lantern movie coming out in 2011? Um, I love Green Lantern. I really hope it's good. Um, I'd lie if I didn't say I had my concerns, but I mean, what, you know, you hear superhero movies being made, you usually think about the bad stuff first. Um, I hope they don't play off Sinestro as the villain from, like, the get-go, which I hear they're going to do him, like, as a good guy up until the at least the end of the first movie and then set him up for sequels, which is great. Um, other than that, you know, I'm anxious to see what the costume looks like because it's going to be completely CGI. They picked Hector Hammond as the villain, who is the guy with the great big brain. Um, I haven't read an exceptional amount of Green Lantern stuff with him in it except for some few, a few issues from the current, like, I think it was issue 5 or 6 of the current run which is up to like 57, 53 now, I don't know. So, you know, it could be good. I haven't seen enough to really form a strong opinion on it yet. Um, I definitely want to see the um, a bigger space empire. I don't want to just see Earth. I want to see Oa. I want to see a lot more Green Lanterns and just how, so on. Okay. What smaller comic book franchise would you like to see Marvel turn into a movie? Um... Smaller comic book franchise? I'm assuming you mean within Marvel. Um, and small? I'd love to see a Runaways movie. Um, I don't think they get near the respect they deserve. And um, I I think they are set up great for a movie. I think it could be fantastic. Um, also, if you're just asking about Marvel movies in general, I definitely wouldn't mind seeing a Nick Fury movie, although we're going to get Sam Jackson if we get a Nick Fury movie. And I'm much more fond of the standard Marvel Universe um. Nick Fury. Jerky Child, I know you don't min mind me mentioning your name. You asked a number of questions. Let's see. Um, number one, will Jonah Hex suck? Probably. Um, 
I've done my best to convince myself otherwise that I can just keep putting it off, putting it off, and say, you know, guys, come on, it, it could be good, it could be good, come on. And at this point, I'm like, I watch the trailer now, and I'm like, dynamite crossbows. Horse-mounted Gatling guns. He can talk to the dead, what the? <laughs> and he just go on, like, I, I was the biggest guy going, you know, Megan Fox, I don't really care. And how she delivers that last line in the movie, like, they took it all, Jonas. Like, she doesn't even want to be there. So, I mean, I'm going to see it. But right now, I'm just kind of like, yeah, let's get it over with. Um, let's see. How do you like Twitter? Um, it's pretty good. I think I tweet a lot more than anyone now because I've got it on my Blackberry. And, um, so I tweet about anything. I'm, like, sitting at mall. End quote. Tweet. Um, yeah, but I've actually got some, I've enjoyed it. You know, it gives me a little something to do when I'm bored. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'll put that address back down here if you didn't catch it before. Um, question three, how would you like your account to develop? Um, my YouTube account? More subs never hurts. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I really don't, not 100% sure about the question. Um, I seem to be having some problem with my editing software. Sometimes, even though like when I shoot the videos, I see them crystal clear. When I put them on YouTube, the it makes them somewhat fuzzy, so I don't know if I can change my software around or what. And I'm gonna, like, my JTrain 97 channel, where I did a lot of my movie reviews, um, it's getting a ha it's been becoming a hassle to keep up to your channels, and um, I'm thinking about just starting a small website where I'll post written reviews and things like that. Um, but guys, I do want your um, opinions on that. Would you go to a, follow me to a separate site, still being, with my tour review still being mainly on YouTube, but a different site for, like, toy news, for, you know, written reviews of movies, shows, video games, everything. How sometimes, um, I think, um, writing reviews is a lot better than just doing one with things like movies or something I don't actually have in my hand. So, um, let me know. Um, question four, how would you improve YouTube? Um, I would basically, the first time you get caught posting a spam address to some fake-ass movie site, I'd block you. Forever, your IP address. You never get back on YouTube because that's ridiculous. I get so many of those things put on my. I mean, my Jonah Hex reviews went up like not even a week ago, and I've already had removed six comments about watching that movie. So that kind of gets ridiculous. Um, other than that, um, harsher penalties for people that go trolls. Basically, I hate YouTube trolls. They're such a pain in the ass. The only spot website that the trolls are worse on is IMDb. Um, so. Question five, what would you do if you were given the chance to write a Dukes movie? Everything. I'd want the Transformers 2 budget, and I'd want people to sit there for like four hours. Um, honestly, I don't know I don't know if I'd be the right person, I'm sad to admit, because there's a lot of um, stuff I'd probably touch on in Dukes that other people wouldn't like. No, nah, I'd take it back. I could do a good one. Um, i just try to make it fun, like the show. You know, fun, good morals, a good cast. I'll even go this far. Sean William Scott and um, the jackass guy. What's his name? Hold on. Surprisingly enough, I have the jackass DVD right here. I love watching that guy get hurt. Uh, oh, crap. It's Johnny Knoxville. That's it. Um, I thought they had a great chemistry on screen together. Um, not so much Jessica Simpson. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not really hard to make a Dukes movie. They just did a lot of the wrong choices. And I'd bring back more, you know, better car stunts, more realistic stunts, with real stuntmen instead of just shooting the car into the air and hoping it falls looking cool, like they did. Um, question six, who has more Southern characters, Marvel or DC? I don't know. Um, I mean, DC, obviously, they've got Jonah Hex. Marvel, as far as Southern characters, nothing immediately pops to mind. Looking around my collection to see if um, I can think of anything. I guess I'd go with DC just because I know they've got Jonah Hex. I mean, I just don't have a whole lot going through my mind when I think Southern characters. Um, let's see. Question seven. Want to move on to other questions? Why not? So that's the end of Jerky Child's questions. Um, next one. Do you support the violent overthrow of the U.S. government? Nah. No, they're, they're screwing us up, but I mean... I mean, I'm not like the guy who says, oh, you know, if we get this politician, we'll be fine. Every politician is looking to screw you over in some small way or another. So eventually I just quit caring. I mean, I've watched a minute amount of politics and tried to pick the guy I think will screw me over least. So, you know, overall, 
it's not a perfect system, but I guess it works. Um, can I handle two hydraulic-powered penises? I already have two. Can I handle another? I don't know. Um, do you believe that World War III will be fought by apes in Iron Man? Or, of course not. It'll be fought by a series of great white sharks with mechanical arms who are fighting hawks that now have brains of scientists. And it will all be filmed by sci-fi. And then our memories will be erased and we'll be like, look at this crappy movie on sci-fi. Oh, you remember Mega Shark vs. Mega Octopus or Great Mega Octopus something? That really happened. I'm sure it really happened. Shark took out the whole Golden Gate Bridge. We rebuilt it in a day. Okay, moving on. Um, who is the hottest girl ever? Does that count porn stars? <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Um, uh, yeah, I don't really have an answer to that one. Um, let's see. Garland Green, I know you won't mind me mentioning your name. What is your favorite aspect about Jonah Hex? Well, let's come back to that one. That was a complicated question. That's Jonah Hex. That's Jonah Hex. Okay, they're all Jonah Hex. Let's start over. What is your favorite aspect about Jonah Hex? Um, I love the fact that Jonah Hex has pretty much just got this screw it attitude, and he's ingenuitive. Like, you know, there's never a situation where Hex is put in that he never gets out of, like, you know. And he's just a complete badass. Like, everyone's like, oh, the Punisher is so cool. I'm like... Jonah Hex is ten times cooler than the Punisher. He, I mean, there's really nothing I don't like about it. Of course, he's a Confederate soldier. I love that. Um, badass gunslinger, Western character, still wears his Confederate uniform everywhere. I mean, I, there's a lot to like. Let's see. Would you ever watch a Jonah Hex TV series? Uh, sure, if they did it right. I probably think HBO would be best for handling that. Would you ever write your own version of the Jonah Hex movie? Um, yes, Garland Green, you actually shot me a message about what I would do, and um. I was going to answer you, and I was actually writing a really long message, and um, my computer got knocked off because my dog ran and got the cord, because he's a small little genius. Anyways, um, I probably, I've been like kind of dabbling in it. I'll probably end up writing one just for fun. Um, for each decade, who would you like to see play Jonah Hex in the 70s, 80s, and 90s? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, Clint Eastwood, probably in the 70s, of course. I mean, everybody wants Clint Eastwood. 80s, I'm probably going to say Clint Eastwood could still do it, um, but I don't have a whole lot of people in my head in the 80s. I mean, I, don't, I didn't watch it, I just don't have like that many memory of what movie care, um, movie stars are currently around in the 80s that I think could do it. Uh, I'm going to say Clint Eastwood for 80s too, he can't be that much older. Um, 90s, 90s, 90s. Was Thomas Jane making movies in the 90s? I don't know. He wanted Jonah Hex. and He wanted to be Jonah Hex now, but I thought he could handle it. But um, I'm so glad they went with Josh Brolin because it looks like even if that movie sucks, Josh Brolin is going to be great as Jonah Hex. I'm um, sorry. I really don't have a better answer for you. I'm going to say my ideal cast would have been Clint Eastwood, but come on, it's a Western. Who wouldn't put Clint Eastwood in there anyway? Um, what do you want to see most in Batman Arkham Asylum 2? Um, mostly, I want to be able to drive the Batmobile. Or just use bat more of um Batman's um vessels. You know, I want to drive the bat boat. I want to you know fly the bat plane. I definitely want to see all that. I mean, come on, the Batmobile was in it. We never got a chance to drive it. That's ridiculous. I mean, even if we just got to drive it and you know hit Bane and knock him off, that would have been something. Um, I also want to see more side characters come in. I want to see Robin. I want to see Nightwing. I mean, I can understand the first one. He's in Arkham. You know, he's closed off. This one looks like it's outside of Arkham. So, you know, of course I want to see more supporting cast. Also, um, as far as villains, I know there's a big rumor going around right now that Two-Face is going to be in it. Obviously, I want that. Penguin's supposedly going to be in it. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Mr. Freeze. I just I have a soft place in my heart for Mr. Freeze. And, um, who else? I was thinking the other day, I got a shuffle of Batman villains. If they could somehow pull off Azrael being in it, I don't know, because they seem to be basing it more in the current continuity, and Azrael's dead. I'd like to see Azrael, but eh, if they can't do it, it's okay. Um, just more villains in general. I mean, there was like two or three boss fights in Arkham Asylum. It's a great game, don't get me wrong, but more villains definitely wouldn't hurt. What comic movie, TV show, or game would you like to see get its own toy line? Ooh, tough one. Um... I don't know, because Jonah Hex has just got his toy line, which would have been my answer first. TV show... Lost has a 
I don't know. I'm kind of ticked with loss right now after that finale. Um, let's see. TV show, TV show, TV show, TV show. Uh -oh. Dukes, of course. Dukes of Hazzard. Um, game? Arkham Asylum is getting figures. Red Dead Redemption. Right now, I, I was crazy about that game. Um, I would love to have a Red Dead Redemption figure of John Marston. And finally, how are you today? Oh, I'm solid. I ain't got to work. I ain't. I don't have to work. Um, chilling. Of course, I just got um, two shipments from UPS, which, if you can't tell, I got my Masters of the Universe Classic Titus right here. And I got all of DC Universe Wave um, 13. Got the Blue Beetle right here. So I'm great. Thank you, Garland. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Out of every comic, which female character would Megan Fox be able to portray well in a movie? Megan Fox has to be some character in a comic. No matter how large of a role, you do not have to like her to answer this question. <clears throat> I hear she's um, set up for Fathom, and not having a huge knowledge about Fathom, I can say at least she'll look the part if she grows her hair out a little bit. So, um, other than that... Uh, she might be able to pull off Huntress, maybe. Um, let's see. Moving on. Which figs do you keep men on card, and what's your rationale behind which figs get yanked and which figs remain in packaging? <clears throat> um, well, I used to be a huge guy about keeping my stuff in packaging. I mean, if you can't tell, I'll turn you around and let you see the massive wall of in-packaged G.I. Joes. And really, that line did a lot for me because um, I stuck um, Hasbro really pulled a kind of a bastard move, and they redid the... They re-released a lot of the older figures without the 25th anniversary logo, which made the price of the ones we kept on card pretty much plummet. Which really pissed a lot of us diehard fans off. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time, like I paid 50 bucks for my um, Snake Eyes with Timber. And then they re-release him. And plus they re-release him with another logo. And, you know, now he's worth like 10. So that really pissed me off. And after that I really started, um, I mean I had always opened some figures, but... After that, it really came like, do I really want to keep this in packaging and risk it being worth nothing, or do I want to open it now and enjoy it? And 90% of the time, opening it now and enjoying it always wins out. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had to take a minor break. Um, let's see. Favorite really, really obscure character? Jonah Hex, I guess. I mean, he's always been really obscure to me. Um, if you're talking about a different type of character... I'd have to say, um, Man-Thing. Uh, Marvel's version of Swamp Thing. I've always been a fan of him. Ever since I was a kid. Let's see. Uh, what is your least favorite figure ever? Ooh. I mean, there's... I don't know if I have a least favorite ever. I mean, you definitely get figures and you're like, wow, I hate this thing. And you throw it, you give it away or toss it or, you know, you just in general don't like it. Um, least favorite ever. That's a hard one. I've got to say, um, Marvel Universe line right now, um, not crazy about them, but I've got to say that Black Widow was exceptionally just, bleh. I didn't like her. Um, let's see. What is your opinion for the Jonah Hex motion comic? Um, I don't like motion comics in general. I mean, stop screwing around and making half a cartoon and just make a cartoon. Not to mention they went with the... 90s miniseries, and I just don't like those. I mean, Joe R. Lansdale's work, you know, I've just never been a fan of his Jonah Hex. Um, he puts it in a different world than the one, than the universe Jonah Hex has been in forever, and I just don't like it. What is your favorite comic series right now? Ooh, that is also hard. I'm really digging Kevin Smith's Green Hornet. Um, let's see. Other than that, um, I just found out Dark Horse is putting out, um, they're kind of redoing the old um, horror comics Creepy, and even though they get put out few and far between, they're on issue three now. Um, it's a fantastic book. I picked up all three issues, and the next one comes out right next month, <coughs> which is good because um, they've had a horrible shipping schedule, apparently. Um, favorite mainstream, I'm really digging Brightest Day. Hopefully we'll get an Aquaman. I think, yeah, I think we're already confirmed for an Aquaman spinoff, and I like Aquaman. I don't see what he gets all the hate for. <clears throat> Dear J Train, you always talk about how much you hate Marvel Universe figures. I happen to like them. 
I don't know what your big problem is, but why don't you tell me what you specifically don't like and what they could do to make you like them more. Oh, okay, um, Marvel Universe figures have a lot of problems with me, honestly. Um, I don't think that, well, the scale itself doesn't bother me because everyone knows I'm a huge G.I. Joe guy, so, um, I will admit I wasn't crazy about it at first, but it's gr the scale, you know, I've grudgingly accepted it. Um, a lot of the figures just don't have an exceptional amount of detail. I mean, the Iron Man 2 line, I'll say the comic series more than the concept series, and I mean, the comic and concept more so than the movie series, have done a great job as far as detail, even articulation, and just being great figures. And then you get to the Marvel Universe, and I, each one I'm like, oh, come on, guys. Um, I'd like to see just the level of detail improve. Do what they're doing with the Iron Man 2 series, the mini ones, with the Marvel Universe series. Not only that, but um, ways they could be better. Um, I'd love to see play sets. Like, I'd love to see a Castle Doom. I'd love to see, you know, the Avengers headquarters. I'd love to see, you know, vehicles. I want to see the Avengers Quinjet. Things like that. You know, things the G.I. Joe series have. Hasbro's already got a winner with G.I. Joe. They should copy and paste and do that with Marvel. Um, I'd also like to see the quality of their accessories improve and more of accessories, more accessories come with them. I mean, I just did this guy. You've got Captain America, who of course can only come with a shield, but then you've got characters like Black Widow, who could come with a crap load of guns, and she comes with one. Um, things like Iron Man that get the same generic little blast. I mean, they could even take them from the Iron Man 2 line, the blast off base, things like that. I mean, it's not hard, and that's really what gets me, is they could make that line such a big winner, and they've just found fans already that are willing to accept all the shortcomings and just buy them anyway that um, they're not trying. Although I will say some of the new figures look somewhat cool. Um, I just, I saw this in stores and surprisingly couldn't stop myself from picking it up. The, Mar the Marvel Universe 2-pack Doctor Doom and Absorbing Man, which reviews will be up soon. And, um, prop that back up. Uh, da -da -da. I'm at the late desk, not gonna stand up. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot they could do. Um, they're getting better slowly, but I'd love to see more, you know, immediately. I don't really get why everyone's scaling down their figures either. I mean, what happened to liking big toys? Let's see. Da -da -da. Um, how many G.I. Joes do you have? I don't remember if I answered that or not, but a lot. So let's take a... Dear J Train, what figure do you most regret buying? Um, right now, without a doubt, that is the Marvel Select War Machine. I mean, I guess what figure I most regret buying changes from time to time, but Marvel Select War Machine, I don't understand why it was um, so easy on him with my review. I mean, he's got like zero detail now that I look at him. His articulation suffers. Um, I just, his gun hardly ever stays. I mean, and then you get the movie, the movie series Walmart War Machine, which is just a fantastic figure. One of my favorite figures in a while. And that thing blows him out of the water and it's cheaper. And it's smaller, yes, but I mean, it's not like Marvel Universe small. So, yeah, I mean, I'm resisting the urge to sit that thing on eBay because he goes nicely with the Marvel Select um, Mark VI Iron Man, but give it time, he'll end up on eBay. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. I answered that. I answered that. Um, let's see here. I'm running. Bleh. I'm wondering what your opinion is on Clint Eastwood's Dollars trilogy. A fist, yeah, I know what they are. Fistful of dollars, few dollars more, good, bad, and ugly. Three of my favorite films, and even Jonah Hex, which I also read, draws influence from The Man With No Name. Also, Josie Wales, another character played by Clint Eastwood. Also, congratulations on becoming a partner. Thank you. Um, I love them. Um, I gotta say, I'm probably more partial to Fistful of Dollars than any of them. Um, but I definitely love all the films. Um, although, I think Josie Wales is a superior film. Um, mainly because it draws influence from my hometown character of um well my hometown hero of Mance Jolly who I don't know if anyone remembers I did a Civil War video a while back which I never did a whole lot more of um, Mance Jolly was a Confederate soldier who lived right in my hometown who you probably never heard of who basically after the Union forces killed one of his brothers continued you know became a rebel within the town and killed a bunch of Union soldiers um he was heavily inspired Josie Wales uh, not a whole lot about him online either, which disappoints me, but oh well. Um, yeah, but 
I love the movies. I've got them all on DVD. You know, the collector's edition. I got Josie Wells, the whole nine yards. I love Clint Eastwood in general. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you'll answer this, but where do you get the money to buy all your collectibles and pay for college and taxes and all that? P.S. Can you please show us your Joe collection and your pile of rocket launchers? Um, pile of rocket launchers actually went on eBay and surprisingly enough sold. I think I had like 30 some odd rocket launchers when I put them up there and I said put like 15 bucks on it and it sold. So, amazed me. I was just kind of like, ah, I need to get these things out of the house. Um, where I get the money is... Honestly, I just work. I look for every opportunity to work. Um, you know, I work at Target pretty frequently. You know, I do anything I can. Um, college, I got a lot of scholarships. You know, benefits of being a nerd. Although I suck at math. You know, I won't lie. I'm terrible at math. I mean, you th anything about English, I can tell you. You get to math, and I'm just like... <laughs> things like that. Uh, collectibles... Yeah, I mean, you just got to pick and choose also with what you want. I mean, I guess it's not great in my case because I buy pretty much all of everything, but, you know, I spend a lot of cash on figures. Um, I buy pretty much every G.I. Joe that comes out. I'm trying to get back into the Masters of the Universe classic line and buy up the ones I miss. Um, I buy pretty much every DC Universe. You just got to, you know, work when you can. You know, can't be lazy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And don't get a credit card. They're trouble. No, I'm joking. I don't. I had a credit card for a while and that became an issue, so I paid it off and tore it up. Um, let's see. And always have your priorities in order, you know, if it comes down between a bill, like a water bill or a college bill or a figure, pick the bill. Um, will you be doing any more G.I. Joe reviews? Um, I'm going to do the whole, the whole new line, like I just said, I'm going to buy them all, you know. I'm back in Target and my guys in the back are working for it, so the first second they come off the truck, I'm going to snatch them out of the back. Um, so they're usually in the back like two weeks before they ever hit shells, and that was my problem with Rise of Cobra. I asked before I just took them out of the back. This time I'm not going to ask, I'm just going to get them out of the back, buy them, and leave. Um, I have one or two like small figures that I probably could re-review, well not re-review, but things I probably didn't do a review of in the first place. So I'll look, but I mean, until the new ones hit around early August-ish, they say, probably not a whole lot more. If you were able to oversee or have an important role in the creation of a film created about any character of your choosing, what would you do and what character would it be? Um, obviously, I'd want to... I mean, are you talking about movies that have already been made or just I have free ranks? I'd love to do my own Jonah Hex movie because, like I said, it it doesn't sound good. Um, I think I could do a great movie, Um, but I'd also love to do Green Hornet, The Shadow, The Phantom, you know, anything, any of my favorite characters that I, you know... I'd love to get a chance to do them. Um, Jonah Hex, I'd just stay true to the origin. Any of them, I'd probably just stay true to the origin story. I mean, tell the origin and also make a great movie. Um, if you had to say eight or Neric, bleh, eight or Neric, my God, I'm scatterbrained. Nate or Eric, of course, Deadpool and Friends, or blows himself up, dude. Who would you save? Um, the hot chick in between them. What, what, are they falling off a mountain or something? Do I have time to get a rope? Okay. Could you make a rant about the Civil War? I've watched your chat, the old one like from a year ago, with Eric, and you've mentioned that you have things to say on the subject. Or at least you could please recommend something unbiased to read about the American Civil War. You know what? Give me two seconds and I'm going to go get something. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I had to run to my own bookshelf downstairs and get my own personal favorite book about the Civil War. The South was right. Granted, the cover is a little strange. It's a little flamboyant. But this is a fantastic book if you're interested in the subject of what really happened during the war. Um, great thing about this book is they um they pick arguments people are going to use against them, like, oh, the South was fighting for slavery, etc., etc. And then they give actual historical accounts and they disprove them. Um, they've got a whole ton of photos. I mean, and it's an amazingly thick book, too. And I mean, that they encourage you, go back and fact check us, you know, challenge us. We want you to see that we're not lying. So that is a great deal. Um, I mean, they've got letters from different, you know, states. Let's see. They've got a whole section about how the North treated slaves. Um, let's see. I mean, like right here, one of the questions they have: How did the Yankee abolish slavery in the North? Answer by a system of gradual empirical, a gradual emancipation that allowed the Northern slave owner to remove their property to the South, sell the slaves, and thereby divest themselves of the human responsibility while making a handsome profit. 
So, I mean, fantastic book. You can pick it up off eBay. It's got a cover price of... I don't know where the cover price is. I think I paid about 20 some odd dollars for my copy. Um, I love this book. If I ever was rich enough to send everybody in the world a copy, I would. Um, other than that, okay, moving on before this actually turns into that ranch you were asking about. Oh, and it has pictures too. Historical pictures. Things like that. If you like pictures. I like pictures. Another Any More G.I. Joe reviews. Something just fell in my collection. I wonder what it was. Oh, it was Azrael. I have Azrael, by the way. Uh, sorry, guys. Got Sartre there. Yay, we actually get to see your face. Now, if the review spot would show his face. That's not a question. Will there be any more chats this summer? Do you plan to make videos on your other channel? Um, chats? Chats just happen whenever, you know, I think Nate's officially off Skype now, which will make it more difficult. Eric and I talk on the phone all the time, so it's kind of difficult to sit down and talk about something we've already called each other and talked about. Um, so i got to say, chats are probably, at least with me, probably won't be happening a lot more. Um, I know two or three people want me to do chats with them, and I'm trying to find the time, guys, I really am, but it's just hard to. Um, videos on my other channel, I'm trying to. Um, like, I made a whole commentary on the Jonah Hex trial and then found out something glitched and it didn't record on my headset, and I got really ticked and didn't do it. Because it was like a 15-minute video, and I didn't want to do it again. Um, like I said, I want to start. I'm thinking about starting my own site. Um, definitely leave me your comments below if you think that's a good idea. Okay. For someone who has never read a Jonah Hex book, what should he buy first? Secondly, what is the best Hex run, in your opinion, that is available in trade? Second best, if that's the same as the first question. Um, right. There's basically two ways you could go. Avoid Joe R. Lansdale's worst first. First and foremost, um, give me two seconds right here, guys. I actually have, um, I was reading it, so I used it as a prop. There's this. There's the Jonah Hex Showcase Collection. Um, I talked about this in my video, How to Start Reading Jonah Hex. Um, it's a great book. Um, it's all in black and white, but it's definitely a very nice read for around 17 bucks. Now, they also just released, um, Welcome to Paradise which was a lot of the same stories you get in the Jonah, this, um, that Jonah Hex book, but in color, same price, less stories, um, so really I think, but if you're picking between the two, I would go with that, Showcase Presents. Um, if you want to read something currently, I would go with Jonah Hex, A Face Full of Violence. Um, this is the first trade from Jimmy Pagliotti's run. Um, it's great stuff, they're all great stories, only 12 bucks, all in color. You know, definitely can't go wrong with that. Um, best run to collect and trade is probably that showcase. Um, second best, probably Face Full of Violence. So, um, thank you for your question. Let's get the camera back over here. Um, what is your favorite neck and action figure? Right now, Jonah Hex. Of course, I'm kind of biased on that one. Um, Avengers or X-Men? I'm going to say Avengers because X-Men are... There's so many I can never keep up with them. And usually Avengers are characters, you know, I mean, at least made up of characters I have at least a grasp of. Uh, let's see. In Blows Himself Up Dude, ask, in 500 words or more, explain only the good things about Matt Fraction's writing. I don't have 500 words. I only have one. Nothing. Um, in 1,000 words or more, talk about only the good points of Frank Miller's The Spirit. I like the physics in the movie. That is all I have. Who is your favorite Cobra character? Um, Firefly. Um, I don't know if you want to consider Dreadnoughts the same branch as Cobra, because I love all the Dreadnoughts. But um, Firefly. If you're talking about Grunt, then Televiper. And what exactly is the generally a general of? Is there a car army? Not one you know about. Why haven't you watched Buffy yet? Because I bought the first two seasons, and then I kept putting it off and putting it off, and now they're just sitting on my DVD collection. And I've only watched like two episodes, and I just don't have time. I still need to finish Supernatural. Um, my friend and his girlfriend were sparkling last night. I think they may be vampires. What should I do? Kill them. And if they don't disappear in a cloud of dust, bury them in your basement and tell no one. That's the end that blows himself up, dude's questions. What would you do for a Klondike bar? 
kill. Why don't you love me the way you used to? Because you look at me and there's no passion in your eyes. Have you been unplugged from the Matrix? No. And that's a very curious question, Mr. Anderson. Uh, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck was a vampire hunter? The whole coffin. Uh, let's see, moving on. Let's see, actually... Da, da, da. If you were on a city bus with one only one other guy who kept saying poop la la non-stop, even if you asked him to stop and he didn't, what would you do? Um, hit him? If some guy you didn't know randomly picked your nose, what would you do? Same answer, hit him. What do you think about there being supernatural elements in the Jonah Hex movie? I think I'm going to find the writer in... You ever, did you see Law Abiding Citizen where he talked about what he did to that guy that killed his family? You know how he took off his cojones with bolt cutters? I, all, that and all, everything else he did to him. With a picture of the comic book on the mirror above. I just watched Law Abiding Citizen. <laughs> Um, if some guy you didn't know randomly bit your cheek, what would you do? Hit him. All, all the answers are hit him, except for one, which is torture him. And then kill him. Um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. It looks like that's, um, kind of rounding off the questions there. Um, trying to remember if I had any others that people asked. Um, I don't think I did, besides show your collection, show your collection, show your collection, which I will eventually do. But, um, that being said, I appreciate everybody asking questions. Um, hope you enjoyed the FAQ. Don't forget to leave me your thoughts about the maybe starting up a website, and I'll see you soon, YouTube. Hey guys, sorry, um, I actually missed a few questions, and I did, I definitely wanted to, um, you know, give everybody their fair shake. Okay, one, one of the questions I missed was, um, Dear J Train, how do you actually space out your reviews? It seems that you come post a video every two days or so, but sometimes it takes longer. Um, I try to post videos in accordance with what people watch and unfortunately sometimes that gets me in trouble because way back when I had a DC Superheroes Bane and a DC Superheroes Batman review and I kept putting them off and putting them off because I was trying to get all my videos uploaded and make sure everybody had a chance to see them and now I hate how I, they're older videos so I hate how I did them so much that they're never going to go up I mean I mean it's back when I did number scores and so on and so forth I mean same with DC Universe Wave 3 I bought them all and then I started uploading something else, and I never uploaded Robin and Destro, which I probably still will upload, but, um, you know, I gotta find the time to do it. I mean, I just got DC Universe Web 13, obviously those are gonna go up first. Um, I always do the more popular stuff first, like, unless it's more popular to me, you know, like NECA Jonah Hex. I got those, and no matter what I had to upload, those were going up. Um, you know, some, right now I'm testing out a space of three days and that seems to be doing better because two days it seems like about 600 people watch the vid with three days it goes up to at least 900 guys you gotta understand I always have stuff to upload I just don't want to swamp you guys and let, you know have no one watch the video so um you know that's how I somewhat paced it out you know let's see uh, review spot can't believe I missed your message hope you don't mind me mentioning you by name um, my question for you, sir, is actually two. Hopefully neither have been asked of you, to you before. First one is, what toy line of the past, a favorite of yours, or just one from the past, is in serious need of a reinterpretation like they've done and been successful with in the Masters of the Universe Classics figures? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, let's see. DC Universe has taken good care of... Oops. Phone call, guys. Sorry. <laughs>